are back. You're watching JKL. Honorable Gatti still with us. Uh, amazing story. We were just talking during the break about, you know, if you're someone who's disabled, you've accepted your state. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes, your environment, the social and physical barriers that exist, make it harder for you to live life. <laughs> uh, for instance, public transportation, right. uh, looking at schools that don't, that don't accommodate people with disabilities, or even evacuation plans that don't account for. So how do you work around that and make sure it's a more conducive environment for people living with disabilities? There, 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 are, many, there, are, many, there are many barriers, there are many challenges that people with disabilities face, social, economic, physical, you know. I just come from London. Uh, where we had the Global Disability Summit, the first ever Global Disability Summit that was actually even addressed by a president on a wheelchair. Hmm. The president of Ecuador <laughs> is actually a man who uses, who wheels himself to the podium. And he was actually wheeling himself and talking about the issues that that country is doing. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually just happy yeah. that as a country, for me to be in London, I, I, I could hear Kenya was mentioned so many times as a country that really, really is trying on disability issues. Mm. The other day you saw the president actually signing um, and, 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 and his cabinet actually approving the, the Persons with Disabilities Bill 2018. That tells you as a country we are doing better. We are really improving. I was in London. In, in the streets of London, I see Safaricom. <laughs> this is a very common of ours. Basically, you know, with all uh, its staff actually talking about disability issues and displaying their, 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 their wares at, at the Global Disability Summit. You know, by the way, I just learned that Safaricom actually has about 98 people with disability employed. You can imagine that is wow. a com one company that yeah. is doing that. What if so many companies, this Airtel and this, uh, I don't know, Telcom and whatever, actually decided that within their own manifesto, with they, in their own internal structure, they can employ people with disabilities. Right. You can imagine. Because people tend to think that people with disabilities, once you are employed, it is a liability. You know, you'll bring losses to your company. But it is not. Safaricom is doing that. And I really want to challenge even companies to actually invest mm. in people with disabilities. I mean, honestly, Vicky, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, was, I looked at the infrastructure when I was in London, because I could actually maneuver myself, mm. accessibility. And those are the, 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 the gaps that I actually saw. Because people with disabilities have accessibility issues. Yeah. They have barriers to accessibility. You go to any, in, in any of these uh, public spaces, you will find that a person with disability cannot be able to actually access with a wheelchair. There are no ramps. When I got into Bunge, now this Bunge, this 12th parliament, what I did with the members of parliament was actually to launch a campaign with them. Because I told them that for me, I am actually launching a program that is called Right to Accessibility right to be served mm. because for me my people my constituents are actually people with disability right exactly <laughs> that is my constituency yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and what about the public transport sector because that has really let down people with disabilities in, in terms in, of access in 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 in, in these developed countries like london for example you have find a very beautiful bus you find very beautiful taxis that are actually designed yeah. for a wheelchair because a taxi will come down and uh, you know you 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 you, you wheel yourself on your wheelchair and you get into a taxi to town to wherever you are even the bus are like that mm. and that is what the gaps that i identified and i said what are we doing with the ministry of uh, of um, um is it transport transport, yeah. transport. Yeah. Because those are the kind of legislations that i've actually written to the speaker in this <laughs> in this in, in, in this parliament to 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 demand to be told what are we uh, what is the, our ministry of transport doing to make sure that people with disability can actually access town if for example the person living with disability lives in that river and he wants to be in town how then can he reach town right. to actually transact and do business just like any other person yes. how are our offices for example this public institution how are these public spaces designed in ways that persons with disability can actually go in there you know get yourself into a lift the elevators that are in, in there how can you get there and go let me tell you, Vicky, I've been in situations where, especially in our counties, in our various counties, I've been in counties where people are actually telling me, people with disability, and I've gone there. The governor's office is actually on 10th floor. Wow. You can imagine a governor's office in ten, is on 10th floor, and people with disability have to see the governor. Do you think uh, people with disabilities can have a, a way to see the governor? You can't have audience You can not see, uh, have an audience. Yeah. And so you find that some, some of these governors, what they are doing is that they are kind of designing some little space down there. You know, that room that is on the ground floor, that is where the governor will come down and meet people with disability. So when people with disability come to see this governor, they have to sit there and wait for the governor to finish his business upstairs in his office and then come. No, and that so, is wrong. Speaking of inclusivity, um, 
something else that you're very passionate about, which is the two-thirds gender rule. This is an issue that has been in the media for a couple of years, and, and many wondering, why can't we pass this piece of legislation? It's so <laughs> stubborn. There have been recommendations. Uh, none have been adopted. It's now in its third round in terms of parliament. Mm. It's gone to court. Why is it so difficult to implement? We have been there, we have been there, um, uh, uh, Victoria. And I, and I remember even in the last parliament, uh, the 2000 gender uh, rule, yeah. the 2000 gender debate was our debate uh, from Monday to Monday. And I can tell you for sure that uh, it is probably that this, we are still not yet in terms of uh, gaining that political will. We still don't have political will. And that still dates back to, you know, the issues of women versus men. You know, it looks like it's a, it's a, it's a fight of the genders, mm -hmm. which of course should not. I mean, yeah. in parliament, we, we have, we have men, men are the majority. We are few because obviously courtesy of affirmative action. Yeah. We are few. And for, me, for you, I can tell you, lobbying these members uh, of parliament really, really takes time. It's not easy to lobby. I mean, we have political interests. We have individual interests. We have tribal interests. And so it is a process that really um, uh, has really dragged from the last parliament, the 11th parliament. Now we are even reviving it now. And you can imagine, <laughs> you can imagine now we are coming to 12th parliament. We have the gender uh, debate and, you know, half of, of the population, half of the members have gone, you know, they're not there. So there's that institutional memory is also <laughs> still not there. Mm. So we have to start again from zero right. <laughs> to start pushing. So for us, I, I really think that this 12th parliament, when we are in 12th parliament, we can really find the force to really push forward this agenda. We have right. seen that my, uh, majority leader is, uh, is bringing it in, in parliament now, as you have seen, yeah. and the majority leader just brought in the, 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 that committee, the committee of, uh, of justice and legal affairs have gone to, to collect views from, from the ground. And we are hopeful that we, were, we are going to gain momentum, we are going to mobilize our, our members, um, our colleague in parliament to actually support the, 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 uh, the two-thirds. And by the way, um, even talking about the two-thirds, <laughs> we are talking about how then can we increase the number of, for example, women in leadership positions, looking at their third, uh, um, you know, reserved for women. And that is the reason why, uh, 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 Vicky, you are seeing uh, as a representative of people with disability, I have brought in parliament an amendment to this the duale bill now yes. it's a constitutional amendment bill and i also want my amendment to actually find favor within it mm. because what i'm actually seeking to do is to make sure that my amendment to the duale bill is basically seeking uh, to provide space and a voice for women with disabilities to feature mm. as it is now <laughs> it is talking about women you know we're talking about women and you know when you talk about women i can tell you we're just giving a blanket cover to the issue of women. Yeah. If, for example, we have women's slots allocated there, will you find a woman with disability among the 20 or the 30 slots? Ideally, you will not. So it is something that is anchored in law already. What I am trying to do is basically to give legislative effect. My amendment yes. is seeking to give legislative effect to, the, to, 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 to that provision, or the, 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 the provision, the Article 54.2, which basically says that uh, um, as measures are going to be put in place, progressive measures to yeah. ensure that, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, persons with disabilities are included, the marginalized youth. So I, and we are discussing, the, you know, we are discussing yeah. issues of women. And therefore, I am trying to find that space. Where can women with disabilities fall? within that two-thirds. What I am basically suggesting to do is to basically try to find space within these two-thirds that we are talking about in yeah. terms of gender. Can women with disabilities find their voices there? Two, three, four, probably with a criteria that they, they can, for us people, for we people who have disability, I'm telling you, unless something is anchored in law, you cannot achieve it. And let's talk about the practicality of that uh, legislation because uh, you've heard people talk about the interpretation and implementation issues when it comes to uh, bringing it forth. Um, the Constitution does not at least prescribe how that two-thirds mm -hmm. will be implemented in the Senate and in the National <laughs> Assembly, the two <laughs> biggest. Right now, the women are accounting for 19% yeah. of uh, you know, the parliamentarians. And yet, Constitution does not give us a way of how we can implement that two-thirds gender rule in those two very critical elective bodies. I think well, well, we, we again go back to the Constitution, because what the Constitution talks about is how progressively, it is something progressive, so that we are keeping on increasing uh, the, the, uh, those numbers. So yeah. it has basically um, uh, given it a blanket you know, kind of uh, implementation. It is still very, very not clear, but what we are saying is that even within that discourse, that discussion yeah. of the two-thirds, how are we going to implement within the Senate and the Nationals? If you look, for example, uh, in the Senate, we have usually the nominated um, uh, slots that are usually given 
given to women, then even in the National Assembly you have nominated slots. Okay. But now within these nominated slots, we usually have slots that are just, you know, there's one for a, a, dis a disabled person in the Senate and one for a disabled person in the National Assembly. So basically, uh, even as we are discussing on these modalities of bringing together mm. the two-thirds, mm. then these two-thirds cannot just go two-thirds when our own my own population who are persons with disability, women with disability, whose, whose rights are guaranteed in the constitution are not captured within the duale bill. That is what you, where my argument is. And that is why I have actually written to the speaker. I have written a memorandum to the clerk, to, to the speaker, to seek audience with the uh, Justice and Legal Affairs Committees of Parliament, right. which of course I have gone to, 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 uh, to, to the, 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 that committee of parliament to actually find a voice within this two-thirds gender discourse that we are talking about, it should really not go down and, 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 and say, I am not even taking anyone behind. What I am actually trying to push forward is an inclusion, inclusion of people with disabilities within this discussion. I'm telling you, if we do not fill in those gaps now, you know, we are usually, people with disabilities are usually those people where we always say, oh, where are those people? Can you bring them here? Oh, the warrior, warrior, we have left yeah, them behind. You know, yeah. we are the warrior factor. <laughs> people with disabilities in this country are warrior. And it's you know? you have to kind so of push through those exactly. perceptions. Those are the spaces we want to work. push. Yes. Those are, when the spaces open up like that, can we push and make sure our people are there? We are not only taking, oh, nominate, we, you bring that one for nomination, bring that warrior, we have left that, that one behind. No. Yeah. How then we carry our people on board. Great. We are talking about inclusion and leaving no one behind. So people it shouldn't with disability. be a matter of tokenism. Exactly. It shouldn't yeah. be tokenism. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. it shouldn't. If you just leave it blanket like that, you will not find a woman with disability featuring among the women who will be, right. <laughs> who will be still put there. So that is, that is my... And I speak for people with disability. Yeah. And I, I want to bridge those spaces. <laughs> those and are you can see how passionate you are no, about I'm it. Excuse. Hopefully it facilitates a lot of that change that you want to see on a Bogati. Really quickly, let's take a look at uh, the feedback. Kenyans are watching. They're very inspired by your story. <laughs> so let's take a look at uh, Twitter here. Frank Orinde who says, disability is not inability. The kind of stigmatization we face through in society is sad. Exclusion and discrimination is massive. The society should be taught to embrace persons living with disabilities to make life bearable. All right. Okay. Wonderful. Another one here, also social media, from uh, Odipo, who says she's always strong, even though she's disabled. Always there to protect not only people with disabilities, but all Kenyans. God bless you, Mom. Thank you so much for that comment. Very encouraging. Thanks for your feedback. Uh, one more here from social media, Twitter. Peter saying, I love her resilience. Disability has not dimmed her sharp poise. You can see that. A shiny example to others in her state. Thanks so much. Let's take a look at the SMS comments uh, coming through at this hour on JKL. Panina saying, happy to see Meheshimiwa Gatti doing well. I'm the Good Samaritan who rescued and took her to hospital. Look oh. at that. Amazing. <sighs> I should wow. see her. I should. Penina. Yeah. Well, I wish oh we had God. a picture oh of you. God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Thank oh you so God. much for your feedback. <laughs> what do you think when you see oh. someone who pulled you out of the wreckage? What goes through your mind? It is so humbling. It is. I don't know. I don't know. It was. Uh, no, I mean, it, it, I know it's, it's emotional, of course, thinking through that day. You were alive, possibly also because of what Penina did. I was, I was, I was, I, and, and I'm saying she's from Narok. Actually, there are so many people who came to rescue me when I got the accident. And I can tell you that um, it's, it's, it's really humbling. It's really humbling. To have that support in that moment and of your Kenyans, life. And if Kenyans, if actually Kenyans can embrace people with disability, and I'm talking because I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've lived a life without a disability. And I can tell you for sure what we talk about. If you are not in that disability bracket, you will never understand what people deserve. And I'm happy that I'm, I'm actually the one now talking about them now and about those issues now because I, I you know, now I am able to, to tell. I am the bridge <laughs> because one, I've not had a disability. I have a disability. I know what it feels yeah. to be disabled and I know what it feels not to be disabled. And when it happened, uh, you were told you had a 50% chance of walking. Oh, yeah. If you could now. I, I, still, I, I still do think that I still have chances of walking.
and and and, and because I do a lot of physiotherapy, and um, you know, my doctor actually told me I have 50 chances. Yeah. I, when I'm in the house, I do a lot of uh, you know physiotherapy. I do a lot of physiotherapy, you know, trying to walk in the house, you know, here and there. And um, I know one day probably, you know, if you know, if that is God, what God wants me to do, I'll do that. But for now, the state I am in now, I am. Uh, doing comfortably what I'm, 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 I'm doing and I'm, I'm, I'm happy about it and uh, you know um, and that is it great let's that take a look at more feedback bright saying I totally identify with Ms. Yumiwa having walked the same journey she is so inspiring wonderful and encouragement uh, to others who are abled differently I yeah. don't like the word disabled abled differently yes. Delfina say, from Meru saying that survival story very inspiring being a woman in this country is a struggle. Being a disabled woman is even tougher. I know because I am disabled too and defying the push to respond to stigmatizing treatment that I'm usually given. Amazing, amazing. One last one from our SMS feedback. Uh, this one from a viewer saying, she is such an inspiration to the entire world. I don't want to stop listening to her. God bless her abundantly. I also have a question. We have most of our disability access pathways either covered by car washers, cars parked in some, wheelbarrows, food vendors, motorbikes, poor wheelchair people have no easy mobility. Mm -hmm. How can we help reinforce the border lines? Question to you, Honorable Gatti. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and that is why I'm, I tell you, I have a program in, uh, that I have not actually working with county governments. Because this, our people, people with disabilities belong to counties. <laughs> Every county government <laughs> needs to make sure that their people are, are carried on board and people with disabilities are carried on board. And yeah. that's the reason why, you see, even the various pavements, we are working, we are bringing in, in, in uh, bills in, in Parliament to make sure to compel this county government, to make sure that within these counties we have pavements well taken care of. Even the, the people who come to design the roads, yeah. they need to actually make sure we have pathways. I've been to, so, uh, my wheelchair finds itself in London, in the streets of London and in New York, uh, where I have lived and worked and studied. Yeah. But again, that cannot, you know, what in, uh, uh, infrastructure those countries have put in place, I can tell you, unless our counties are deliberate, because this is just lack of uh, commitment from our counties. Our county governors have to deliberately make sure that they are carrying people with disabilities. They right. need to be able to design the roads. They need to be able to put the pathways. They need to be able to know that how are we designing this road for our accessibility. Mm. These various feeder roads that get into, um, uh, into their, their homes and their markets, these are the roads that we need to design in such a way that people with disability can actually go about the market, go about going <laughs> wherever they want to go within, because that is their, where they belong. Mm. Counties are our co countries. So every governor has a responsibility to enforce the people, the, the people, the county persons with disabilities act. Good point. Because Counties that is taking that is a lead said. on uh, helping people with disabilities. One last comment here from SMS uh, feedback line. I believe that is it. But your, your final comments uh, after this conversation, I feel like I know so much more about you. You're such an inspiration. <laughs> Where do you draw this strength from because you said earlier it was a process to accept that this is you now yeah uh you know and and despite society treating you differently mm -hmm. friends treating you differently yeah. family treating you differently mm -hmm. how did you eventually accept and now take the charge to lead this cause no you know vicky i am a believer <laughs> one thing with me you know i am actually a believer and I'm, I'm 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 a very strong woman and i've always known that from from very early age so and 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 and, and i um i really find solace in, in in prayer i do pray a lot because <laughs> obviously um, um i know where i have come from and and, and therefore for me uh, the, the fact that i wake up every day and find myself alive uh I, you know the fact that i actually did not die on the day of the accident yeah. obviously god had a purpose for me and even where I am now, I am actually nominated my, my, my party ODM uh, to do issues disability. Mm -hmm. And I am doing that work as if there is no tomorrow. Because for me, I'm seeing now what challenges my people are going through. Exclusion has to be removed. We have to remove those barriers that make accessibility to persons with disabilities. We have to ensure they go to school. We have to ensure that they actually graduate. We have to ensure that they get a job. They have to transition. Mm. People with disabilities have to transition from university, from colleges, right into employment. Therefore, we also need to make it very easy for people with disabilities because they have homes. Women with disabilities are... T I, I, don't you think women with disabilities give birth? They do give birth. How do Absolutely. you think they do it? I mean, yeah. how do they do it? Just as normal as any other person. Yeah. So uh, why are we making why are we assuming these things i mean honestly 
as long as people with disability breathe the same air, same air, they go to bed, they they reproduce, isn't it? We do reproduce and we have and we are heads of families. Honestly, we have to remove the barriers of yeah. discrimination yeah. to make sure that this country and I'm happy that the president is actually willing. Mm. I mean you've seen I've seen that. My party leader actually within my party, which is the party of ODM itself. We have a structure, we have a league that is called the ODM uh, Disability League, where I do a lot of input into making sure that people with disabilities are mainstreamed within the political parties to ensure that they are able to participate even in public life. Yeah. People think that people with disabilities only participate in these social, warrior, warrior, social issues. People with disabilities also need spaces, public spaces to participate in public life, to be heard, to be seen, to be invited to decision-making tables like this one, where people with disabilities can actually talk about serious programs that affect them. So unless we actually make sure that those structures as a country yeah. are in place, people with disabilities are going to be left. And we are not going to allow. We will not allow. <laughs> that is something that we will not. Yeah. We are now so many of us in parliament, courtesy of the constitution mm. and courtesy of uh, the two, th this, this, uh, you are hearing the affirmative action. Right. We are two in, the, in parliament, in the National Assembly where I sit. They are two in the Senate. That begs four nominated. Courtesy of affirmative action. This causes, so we want to make sure that we are lobbying our members of parliament to always find issues disability at their fingertips. That way they are also able to making sure that people with disabilities within their wards and their constituency are catered for. Thank that way so we are going to move forward as a country. Great. Thank that you so much, sure. Honorable Gatti. <laughs> we could be here all day, but thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. Thank you for not giving up as well, because Absolutely. it is necessary. Of course, you've seen the inspiration that you are to the so many people who are watching. Uh, thank you once again. And remember, JKL powered by Telcom. Jeff was not here. The bench was not here either. Of course, we <laughs> had to be accommodating to Honorable Gatti. But she brought the heat. <laughs> Where's the fire extinguisher? Well, it's gone. <laughs> but I hope that you enjoyed yourself. Thank you so much for sharing your story. And of course, tomorrow night, Yvonne Okara will be on, on tonight. Have a wonderful evening. And let's do this again next week. Jeff will be back next Wednesday. Good night. Good night. Thank you.